Hello. अच्छा अच्छा So we're not starting. Ah, yeah. Iram, yeah. If targa vakte, so uh, we will be starting after five minutes. Okay. Okay.
Vader <clears throat> and Iram, am I audible to both of you? Yes, okay. sir. So I think you can see the screen, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So today's topic, the chapter we are going to deal is general organic chemistry, GOC, in which we are going to cover inductive effect and its application and isomeric stability, aromatic, anti-aromatic and non-aromatic, then hyperconjugation. Then we will talk about bond length, stability and acid bases. Okay. So let's start with this electronic displacement effect. So basically any effect in which electron displaces that effect is electronic displacement effect and it, it is of two types permanent and temporary in permanent these three effects comes inductive effect mesomeric effect and hyperconjugation and in temporary effect we have inductomeric and electromeric these three are very important and we need to only study about these three. The first, when we are going to talk about inductive effect, so this inductive effect arises due to electronegativity difference. If there will be electronegativity difference, then there will be inductive effect. And let's take an example, CH3, CH2. CH2, CH2, CA. As you know that chlorine is more electronegative. So what will happen? This will have delta negative and this will have delta positive. One then comes delta positive two. This chlorine will take or withdraw electron from here more strongly than this, more strongly than this and this. Always remember that after third carbon, inductive effect considered to be zero. That means this chlorine will not be able to at attract or withdraw electron from this fourth carbon. And the more effect that are the more attraction of electron for chlorine will be from this carbon and then this carbon and then this carbon. It is in decreasing order. That means inductive effect is inversely proportional to distance. Inductive effect is inversely proportional to distance. So this is the reason of the inductive effect and I have written some points about this. Causes of inductive effect is electronegativity difference. It is permanent effect. It is weak effect. Why weak effect? Only partial displacement or partial transfer of sigma electron. One point that is very important is that inductive effect operates through sigma bond, operates through sigma bond. Like you have a study resonating effect or resonance that operates through pi bond only partial transfer of sigma electron takes place only partial that means it displaces <coughs> as you can see can anyone tell me whether there will be inductive effect or not yes or no sure it depends if there is any electronegative diff electronegativity difference if there is any other atom which is more okay. electronic. Heather, this is the compound. Can you, uh, you know this is a compound which has a name butane. So, so see if you uh, if I asked whether it is an inductive effect or not, you know this is your carbon. This is also your carbon. This is also your carbon. So there is no difference in electronegativity of all this carbon because all are same carbon. So no inductive effect in this compound. Yes, sir. Is that clear, Heather? Yes, sir. Can you tell me whether in this compound inductive effect is not? 
uh, inductive effect occurs or not. You are aware of bond line structural formula, right? Yes or no? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I don't think there will be any inductive effect because there is no other atom which is more electronegative than carbon. Okay. Now, there is a concept about this and that is basically, I'm going to tell you. Can you tell me the hybridization of this carbon and this carbon? The first... Sir, SP3, SP... Allah. Uh... Can you tell me the hybridization of SP2. the doubly bonded carbon? SP2. SP2. This, uh, yeah, this is SP2. Can you tell me the hybridization of this singly bonded? That is SP3, SP2. right? So you have studied in the previous class that carbon SP is more electronegative than carbon SP2 than carbon SP3. Oh, uh, sp3 are you getting my point you have studied this s characteristic directly proportional to electronegativity so if you remember in sp we have 50 percent s character in sp2 we have 33 percent s character and in sp3 we have 25 percent s character that means as you can see this is your sp2 hybridized carbon that's why it is more electronegative than this carbon. Are you getting my point? So there will be inductive effect between this carbon and this carbon. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Please tell me whether this will have inductive effect or not. It will. It will have inductive fluorine. effect. Fluorine. So there will be delta negative since this fluorine is more electronegative than carbon, so this will have and delta negative and this will have, or this carbon will have delta positive. So there will be inductive effect. That's why it's not equals to zero. <laughs> now moving to the next point, which is also very important. After third carbon, as I, <coughs> as I already told you, after third carbon, inductive effect is considered as negligible and also remember that inductive effect of hydrogen is considered as zero that's why we didn't talk about hydrogen hydrogen is uh, carbon is surrounded by hydrogen but hydrogen's inductive effect we consider zero now inductive effect is of two types plus i and minus i plus i is the one which donates electron and minus i is the one which withdraw electron with withdraw electron like if i am talking about this so this fluorine is more electronegative so what it will do it will attract electrons so this will have minus i and this alkyl group will have plus i so minus i electron withdrawing group and plus i that means electron donating group one more important point is that all the alkyl group whether you have the thyroid propyl butyl this all will have plus i effect that means electron donating group this alkyl groups are electron donating <laughs> group now moving to the <coughs> next there is a question you need to tell me <coughs> whether the encircled group are uh, will show plus i or minus i encircled group will show plus i or minus i so you can easily answer me if you are not able to answer me just let me sir minus i for the first one yeah this will be minus i because fluorine is more electronegative tell me about the second one either and era sir minus i because there will be because more this is sp2 very good and this is your sp3 so this will also show minus i. And then what about the third one? Any answer? Either has minus i. Why it will show minus i? 
Sir, is correct. This is sp2. And if you are going to check this carbon, this is also sp2, right? Yes, sir. But they still use uh, told me minus side. That is the correct answer. Oxygen is more electronegative. Oxygen is more electronegative. So this oxygen will be continuously withdrawing electron from this carbon. And that's why there will be deficiency of electron on this carbon. And it will start attracting or withdrawing electron from this carbon. That's why it will show minus I. Very good. What about this one? <clears throat> Fourth one. See, this is your oxygen. Oxygen is second most electronegative element. So, so it will also show minus I. What about this CH3? What do you think? Plus I. Plus I. Plus I. Plus I. Why it is so? Because this carbon is sp3, but this benzene carbon is sp2. That's why plus I. Can you tell me about this? Minus I. Minus I for the. Yeah, because this carbon is sp, and sp carbon is more electron negative than sp2 carbon. That's why it is minus I. Very good. The last one, seventh one. Please do tell me. Minus I. No. See, this is sp2. This is also sp2. If you are going to check the next one, this is also sp2. In the previous one, in which aldehyde was there, and there was like this, the situation, sp2 is this, and sp2 is this. But with this carbon, a more electronegative element is connected. That's why it will withdraw electron from here, and it will start withdraw electron from here. But there is no scenario like this. There is no inductive effect. Are you getting my point? Sir, uh, in the sixth one, the yeah. the carbon red right, the one encircled will be uh s uh, will have a, a sp hybridization right yes so this it, is sp and this is your sp2 and i told you sp carbon is more electronegative so it will attract that's why this is minus i ah oh, okay sp sp2 SP, okay but here in here sp2 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 so there is no inductive effect heather and iram Yes. Sir. Okay. <clears throat> Moving to the next. This series is very important. This is basically the series for minus, uh, sorry, minus I. This NF3 plus is the most powerful withdrawing group, NF3. Then comes here, take a screenshot or write it. This is very important. Then comes your NF3 plus. NS3 plus and then NO2 and CN. Generally, the question lies between this NO2, CN, and fluorine. So always remember that this fluorine is less electronegative than CN and NO2. And after fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine comes. And then comes this alkyne, that means carbon with sp electronegative. Listen to me, this is very important. Carbon with elect, uh, electronegativity or hybridization SP, basically the carbon which is having SP hybridization will, will be more electronegative than the nitrogen having SP3 hybridization. Is that clear? Yes, sir. If there will be no charge on nitrogen, then this will be the scenario. After amine, this comes uh, phenyl and then comes alkene and then hydrogen and uh, of hydrogen we consider inductive effect as zero okay then the next series is for plus side that means donating tendency the most donating tendency is of ch2 minus and then comes your nh minus o negative c double bond o minus three degree alkyl that means three degree and Two degree, one degree alkyl, then comes your methyl and then hydrogen, we consider is zero. But when we are going to talk about the isotopes of hydrogen, tritium will have the most powerful donating tendency than deuterium and hydrogen. 
than deuterium and hydrogen so i think you are uh, you are aware of this finding degree of carbon yes or no can you calculate the degree of carbon it the amount of uh, groups the carbon is connected to uh, not amount of group basically the amount of carbon the carbon is connected to yeah basically a carbon attached directly to the number of carbon that means if you are going to check the degree of any carbon like this if i am going to show you if you are going to check the degree of this carbon this carbon is directly connected to this carbon that's why it is one degree but if you are going to count the degree of this carbon this carbon is connected with this carbon this carbon and this carbon that's why it is 3 degree if you are going to check about this carbon you can see it is connected with this this and this so that's why it is 3 degree if you are going to check about this you can see this carbon is connected with one or two that's why 2 degree and this is 1 degree so basically the number of carbon to which a carbon is connected directly that is called degree of carbon is that clear can i move to the next yes. part yes sir okay the next part application of inductive effect and it's uh, <clears throat> very important the first is uh, the first point is here that is intermediate what is intermediate intermediate is basically any substance or anything which is product for a reaction and a reactant for another reaction intermediate is the uh, middle part of a reactant or a product you can talk uh, say like this or you can say from a to b and b to c so this b is your intermediate and for this reaction b is the product and for this reaction then b is the reactant so i just defined here a species which is product for one reaction and a reactant for another reaction that is called your intermediate is that clear yes sir yes sir okay the next point that i have written already <clears throat> that is very important we have three types of intermediate generally there are more type of intermediate but here we are going to discuss about three the first one is carbo cation that cation and carbon free radical that means carbon will have an unpaired electron like this so this will be your carbon free radical and then comes your carbon anion carbon anion that means carbon will have negative charge is that clear now this carbon free radical we get this by homolytic cleavage we get this by homolytic cleavage and what is homolytic cleavage homolytic cleavage that means there is a bond and you know in one bond you have two electron this carbocation carbon free radical carbon anion we talk only in covalent bond and we know that covalent bond is formed by sharing of equal electron one your electron and one minus electron there will be a bond and what is how you are going to get carbon free radical there will be homolytic cleavage that means you will take your own electron i will take my own electron and that is called homolytic cleavage so this will be the arrow will be like this uh, it shows that carbon will take its own electron so it will have ch3 dot and since carbon is having an unpaired electron so this is your carbon free radical and this is your chlorine radical since we are studying organic chemistry so we will be focusing on carbon free radical so whenever a fusion takes place in which each one will take its own electron that is called homolytic cleavage if you are going to talk about the octet you know carbon is making <coughs> three bond with hydrogen that means six electron and one unpaired electron is there seven electron so in carbon one free radical we have in complete okay and if you are going to calculate the hybridization it will be sp2 structure now we have two other types of uh, this uh, intermediate the one is 
कार्बोकेटाइन एंड अनदर इज कार्बन अनाइन कार्बोकेटाइन और कार्बन अनाइन फॉर्मड बाई द फ्यूजन ऑफ हेट्रोलाइटिक हेट्रोलाइटिक दैट मीन्स वन ऑफ द ग्रुप विल टेक अदर्स इलेक्ट्रॉन ऑल्सो दैट इज कॉल्ड कार्ब हेट्रोलाइटिक दैट इज कॉल्ड हेट्रोलाइटिक Now, since we are talking about carbon free uh, carbocation, that means there will be positive charge on carbon. That means the group which is attached with carbon will be taking electron of carbon also. So that's why chlorine will have negative charge and carbon will have positive charge. And this is your hydrolytic cleavage. Now, if you are going to talk about the octet, you can see carbon is making only three bond. There is no free electron. Only positive charge, so it is six electron. There will be six electron, and it is incomplete. Incomplete. The octet will be incomplete. Hybridization again, sp two geometric trigonal planar. But when you are going to talk about carbon anion, carb anion, that means carbon is having negative charge. That means carbon took the electron from that group or any group. So you can see the arrow is like this that represents. carbon took the electron of chlorine so there will be negative charge this is just an example since chlorine is more electronegative so chlorine should take but to show you the formation of carbon ion carbon ion i just show this so cs3 negative and cl positive you can see fission again the hydrolytic octet eight electron three bond with hydrogen that means six electron and a negative charge two more electron Eight electron and hybridization becomes sp3 and the geometry is trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal pyramidal. This will have an a structure of nf3. Is that clear? Okay. Now I'm going to give you some question. Oh, please do it. compare the stability in the first then second and then the third Very good, Hadar. Iram, is there any answer from you for the first one? You need to understand the first word is C positive. C positive that means carbocation. That means deficiency of electron is there because its octet is not complete. So to stabilize it, it should be connected with the group which is which is having a nature of donating. So you can see in this. we have three group which is methyl and you know methyl group has a nature alkyl which uh, methyl is an alkyl as you know that so this will have a nature to donate electron so as you can see this will have a nature like this so it is 3 degree and getting support from three car uh, three group and this is getting support from two this is getting support from 3 and this is not getting support from anywhere so this will be the order is that clear so always remember that positive will be stabilized by positive that means positive what i am uh, uh, telling it what i what i want to say is that when there will be 
a positive sign that means carbocation will be there it will be stabilized by plus i it will be stabilized by plus i because all this group have plus i effect which is donating electron to the carbocation and stabilizes it is that clear yes sir okay what about the next iram See, I'm going to explain this. As you can see, this is your carbocation. Carbocation that means <clears throat> having electron deficiency. Electron deficiency. And near this, NO2 is connected, which has a minus I effect. That means it will withdraw electron, which destabilizes this carbocation. There is also NO2 in this, but this is. far away from here so it will withdraw less electron so it will be less stable and as you can see this is more far away from carbocation so it will not be able to attract or withdraw electron like this and this one so this will be the more stable and this will more stable always remember that positive will be destabilized by minus i be stabilized by minus i as you can see no2 is nearer to this carbocation so it will start withdrawing electron from this carbocation are you getting my point and if it will start electron uh, withdrawing then it will destabilize this com uh, compound in this case no2 is a little bit far away and it will not be able to attract or withdraw electron from this as compared to this in uh, that's why uh, c will be the most stable then b then a even and other are you able to understand it yes sir okay so i could explain it once more yeah uh iram <clears throat> you can see i'm going to explain with this example i'm going to write it here see this is your carbocation to which no2 is connected okay and <clears throat> another carbocation if you are going to understand the third one see uh, this is basically a converse you can see this is your carbocation this is your carbocation there will be support from this side but at the same time no2 is there and no2 will withdraw electron no2 will withdraw electron but this is carbon <coughs> this carbocation is having deficiency of electron deficiency of electron that means <coughs> it requires electron but at that time no2 starts withdrawing electron from here carbon uh, carbocation is having <coughs> deficiency of electron and this no2 will start elect uh, withdrawing electron which destabilizes in this also no2 start withdrawing which destabilizes this but as you can see no2 is far away as compared to this so it will not be able to withdraw this much electron this no2 much electron so it will destabilizes less than this that's why this is more stable and as you can see the next example no2 is far far man and as i told you on the fourth after third carbon inductive effect uh, diminished or we uh, take it considered as negligible so it will not be able to withdraw electron from here is that clear theorem must should i explain it again it's clear sir i understand okay Please do the third one. very good okay. 
किरम ओके नाउ सी अगेन यू कैन सी देयर इज अ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ कार्बोकेट एन कार्बोकेट एन कार्बोकेट एन कार्बोकेट एन and there is ch3 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 so this will be the stability order because you know that carbocation is having deficiency of electron it needs the group which donates electron more and more to this so as you can see tritium having more uh, more donating tendency as compared to deuterium and hydrogen so this will give or support this carbocation much more than this and then this that's why c is more stable than b than a kiram if you feel any kind of problem in this please do let me know i understand professor very good please do the fourth and fifth one it's wrong hello see have you ever heard of dnp root or <clears throat> you can easily understand without dnp rule also you can see this is your carbocation this is also your carbocation okay fluorine is here which will withdraw electron nit nitro group is here which will withdraw electron but generally in our mind it comes that no2 is more powerful withdrawing electron that's why it will destabilizes this compound as compared to this but at the same time you can see no2 is at first second third no2 is far away from this carbocation as compared to fluorine so it will not be able to withdraw that much electron as compared to fluorine because no2 is far away from carbocation so due to increasing in distances inductive effect decreases that why it is more stable so b greater than a it will be either so dnp stand for this is the we give preference to distance then number then power then power we will go for power and this is for number and power please do the fifth one let me know when you are done with this <clears throat> the fifth one see <clears throat> carbocation carbocation and the group which is attached with this is no2 which is having 
withdrawing power and this is also withdrawing power but also remember that that number two chlorine will have more effect than one no2 so this will be the stability idam <coughs> you can understand is play it like that yahan carbon ki kami hai sorry electron ki kami hai already but the group which is attached near this is having the characteristic to attract electron ye sare ke sare electron dono hi group attract karenge no2 or chlorine but yahan pe kya hai aapke paas no2 is अलोन अकेला है एनओ टू और दो क्लोरीन सो दो क्लोरीन का विद्रोइंग पावर एक एनओ टू से ज्यादा होगा ऑलवेज इज दैट क्लियर बोथ ऑफ यू ओके कैन यू चेंज द स्लाइड यस सर ओके गिव यू अ क्वेश्चन Can you see your new screen? Can you see a new screen? Yes, sir. So, question number sixty, and I just edited it. The option is R C triple bond C negative. and this is your r2c double bond ch negative this is r3c ch2 negative and this is benzene on which negative charge is there so you are going to apply the inductive effect and this is a question from neat 2008 sir what's the difference between like is there any difference in stability for the carbocation and carbanion or are they no no see see कार्बो के टाइम दैट मीन्स डेफिशियंसी ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन टू स्टेबलाइज इट देर शुड बी ग्रुप विच इज इलेक्ट्रॉन डोनेटिंग ग्रुप आर यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट यस सर एंड कार्ब अनाइन नेगेटिव चार्ज दैट मीन्स इट इज इलेक्ट्रॉन रिच ग्रुप इट इज इलेक्ट्रॉन रिच कंपाउंड सो टू एस्टेबलाइज दिस कार्ब अनायन देर शुड बी ग्रुप विच इज इलेक्ट्रॉन विदड्रॉइंग इन नेचर are you getting my point sir so this is carbon ion so you need to see <coughs> to the group which it is attached is is it electron donating or is it electron withdrawing if it is electron withdrawing it will be more stable okay is good Sir, why is there this Armstrong unit in the sixty-one question? Uh, Heather, what you just told, which one will be the more stable? Now, which, who, who, what is the option? A, B, C, D. So the first one will be the more the A option. Yeah. Yeah, that is good. As you can see. this is triply bonded so it will attract more and more electron then benzyl i told you then double bond and then this is the last one which is having plus i effect that's why i am telling you positive will be stabilized by positive what i mean to say is that if carbocation is there this is what i am calling it positive it will be stabilized by positive plus i and if there is negative negative will be stabilized by negative are you getting my point that means carbon ion will be stabilized by the group which is attached with elect uh, electron with drawing group is that clear yes sir 
Can you see the new screen again? The one not. Yes, sir. Okay, now see. The next permanent effect is, effect is resonance. In the previous effect, that is through uh, through sigma bond and partial displacement of electron takes place, but this resonance is through pi bond and the complete transfer of pi bond will take place. That means from one carbon to another carbon, all the pi electron will go. So complete transfer of electron pi electron, delocalization of pi electron. Pi electron will move from one place to another, from one atom to another. Only pi electron, not atom. I will show you where uh, where uh, where resonance will take place or not. Resonating structures are hypothetical. Resonance hybrid is real. You have heard, uh, you have done this in class 12th aldehyde, alcohol, and uh, haloalkanes. The resonating structure, like <laughs> if you remember, this is your phenol, and if you have a study, this will be like this. So, the structures, these structures are called resonating structures. Then again, move to this point, this point. So these all uh, structures are called resonating structure, which are <coughs> which are hypothetical in nature. But at the, the end, <coughs> when you are going to draw a structure like this, if you have seen dot, 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 and dot, 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 OH. So this will be <coughs> basically your resonance hybrid. And the resonance hybrid is a real and the resonating structure. These all are <coughs> hypothetical. Is that clear? Do yes. you remember? Okay. In resonance, only pi electron moves. Atom does not move. Only pi electron moves. Atom does not move. And then in resonance, number of electron will always be constant and charges will also be constant. Okay. Uh, you know, in a uh, particular or <clears throat> specifically in a compound, if you will count the number of electron, it will be always equal. Okay. Now the next for resonance system should be conjugation where resonance should take place or not. So there, if in any compound there is conjugation, then resonance will take place. If the conjugation is not there, then resonance will not take place. That means delocalization of pi electron will not take place. So if the first is this, if the system will be pi sigma pi, then this is the conjugation. And uh, in this type of conjugation, resonance can take place. Then comes your pi sigma vacant orbital. Positive, that means positive, that means vac uh, electron deficient, and or we can call it vacant orbital. Or you can say <coughs> pi sigma negative charge, or you can say pi negative lone pair, or you can say pi negative and then the free radical or you can say negative sigma vacant orbital lone pair sigma vacant orbital if the system in any compound is like this then resonance will take place like if you can see in benzene ring in benzene ring the system is like this so if you are going to count it you can see pi sigma pi sigma pi sigma so that's why resonance takes place and the position of double bonded changes easily and the position of double bonded changes easily now this double bond will move to this this double bond will move to this and this double bond moves to this is that clear yes sir Yes, okay, sir. now moving to the next, there are some arrows. These arrows are very important. Symbol used to draw resonating structure. If the arrows are like this, that means heterolytic cleavage, uh, heterolytic cleavage. So for transfer of two electron, as you can see in CH3Cl, I did heterolytic in which I saw it like this. And then Cl will have negative charge because it took electron from carbon. And since carbon gave electron, so it will have 
positive charge. Homolytic cleavage, you saw that if any compound there will be homolytic, the arrow is like this. Both will take its own electron. So this is your homolytic cleavage. And these arrows are used in between two resonating structures. Is that clear? <clears throat> Can I move to the next part? Yes, sir. Okay. Now see, I'm gonna show you case one. Uh, always remember that flow of electron always takes place negative to lone pair, lone pair to pi bond, and pi bond to positive charge. That means vacant orbital. This is very important. Okay. Now. If I'm going to give you, this is very important and I want you to draw it. I want both of you to draw this. Can you draw this? This will might take a little bit time, but it will be very good. Will you be able to draw the resonating structure of this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay, please do it. I'm ready. Are you done with this? Iram, are you done with this? See what will happen. This will move to 
this. And then you can see double bond will be there and there will be positive charge and the risk part will be as it is. Then this will move to this. And you can see double bond will be here. Positive charge will be here. Double bond and then double bond. And then this will move to this. So you can see double bond will be like this and positive charge. And again, you can see. Wait a minute, please. And this will be like this. Again, it will be like this CH2 plus. So these all are resonating structure. I started from here one, two, three, four, five resonating structure are there. If you want to draw the resonance hybrid, you just need to see uh, so the single bond first single bond and you can see initially the double bond initially the double bond was here so i'm gonna show it by dotted line then the double bond comes here so i'm gonna show it by double bond uh, dotted line wherever the double bond moves you are going to show it by double bond and whenever the charge delta positive here if it is negative, then we are going to say uh, so delta negative. And if it is positive, so we are going to write delta positive. So this will be the resonance hybrid. And the above one is resonating. Your voice is breaking a lot. Heather, are you there? Yes, sir. Sir, your voice is breaking a lot. Okay. Is my voice still breaking? It's not breaking now, sir. Okay. Just let me know if my voice is breaking. Yes. No, it's right. Okay. Can I change the slide? Yes, sir. Okay. Now the next is case two in which pi sigma negative charge. This is the scenario. You can see this will move to this point and this will move to this point. So the resonating structure will be this. And if you want to draw resonance hybrid, it will be like this, see. Initially, the double bond was in between this and then it moves to this. So there will be delta negative and there will be delta negative. This will be the resonance hybrid. Is that clear? If you want to draw a structure like this, you can see this will move to this and this will move to this. If this will move to this, delta positive will be here and delta negative. If you want to draw a resonance hybrid, you just need to show single bond. You just need to show single bond. And then you can show initially the double bond was here, then moves to here. There was delta positive, positive, that's why delta positive, and then there is delta negative. So this is how we do the resonance. You just need to find the conjugation and move the electron. Negative move to the lone pair, then lone pair to the uh, double bond and then double bond to <coughs> double bond to carbocation. Can you change the slide, Hiram? Yes, sir. Okay. 
So the next scenario is this pi sigma pi. You can see this is your benzene, and benzene I already saw you the resonating structure. These both are resonating structure, and this is your resonance hybrid. So this is the situation for pi sigma pi. Okay. After this, we have the fourth one, which is very important. I'll, I'm going to show you why it is very important. I'm going to show you. See, this is the situation for pi sigma, and then this is your free radical. So for carbon free radical, you need to do. You need to do what? You need to do homolytic cleavage. So there will be CH2, and this electron is free. And again, this electron is also free. And as you can see, there is CH2, which already has an electron like this. This was in the question. So now this two free radical will combine to form a double bond. And this is how we write the resonance hybrid. I'm going to switch off my video because it might uh, it is affecting the voice. Have you got it or should I explain it in other, other form? Please do let me know. Ira. Ira, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm here. Can I change the slide? Uh, one minute, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. You can change. Okay. Now the next one is very important. That is D orbital resonance. If you have CS two negative Cl and CS two F, there is no vacant orbital in chlorine, but there is vacant orbital in chlorine, and there will be. This is your negative, not positive. There will be CH2 double bond Cl, and due to vacant orbital of vacant d orbital of chlorine, there will be resonance that is called d orbital resonance. That is called d orbital resonance. So this d orbital resonance is very important. These are some points that you need to take care while deciding the stability of the resonating structure. If any resonating structure there is more pi bond or more covalent bond. More is the number of covalent bond. That means if a compound is having more pi bond, that means that will be more stable. That will be more stable resonating structure. Then if this fails, then you are going to octet complete resonating structure. If in a resonating structure, a compound is having a uh, complete octet that will be more stable. Neutral resonating structure will be more stable than charged resonating structure. Always remember that negative charge on more electron negative element is more stable. That means if I'm going to write O negative and C negative, as you know that oxygen is more electron negative than carbon. So this negative charge will be more stable on oxygen than carbon. Then move to the next point, the fifth one. Opposite charges. If the if in a resonating structure, opposite charges are there in the compound, they should be nearer to each other. And if in a resonating structure, same charges are there, they should be far away from each other. Is that clear? Then at last we apply inductive effect. Heather. Yes, sir. So we just started the rules for stability. You just need to take a screenshot. Uh, this is the rules for stability for resonating structure. Okay. If in a resonating structure more pi bond is there, that means it is more stable. If it fails, then we will go for octet complete resonating structure. In a resonating structure, if octet is complete, then it is more stable than incomplete octet. Then if a resonating structure is neutral, then it is more stable than charged resonating structure. And this, uh, this fourth point is very 
important negative charge on more electronegative element is more stable positive charge on more electronegative element is very less stable are you getting my point are you getting my point yes sir no sir i didn't understand this one okay uh, i am telling you that negative charge on more electronegative more electronegative element is more stable let's take an example of o negative and c negative you know that oxygen is more electronegative so negative charge on oxygen will be more stable than carbon got it add it yes sir is my voice breaking yes sir it's breaking again no it will be fine from the next class might be oh, okay and just try to you can understand it just let me know when to change the slide i will explain it with the help of examples are you done with <clears throat> are you done with this sir so. now we do it <laughs> the stability of following so your voice is breaking a lot five question is there wait a minute uh, from the next class uh, it won't break maybe problem is in this uh hader is my voice is still breaking hader and iram it's breaking a little bit sir for me okay that's why you just turned off my camera i don't know what right so
So you can keep going a little slowly, slowly, so we can maybe make out on the PPT. If your voice is breaking in between. Okay. Question number one, A or B? It's not working today. You recommend either A or B? Where B is more stable. This, B will be more stable. B will be more stable because here one pi bond and zero pi bond. The first criteria for the stability: more pi bond, more stability. Iram, do you remember? Yes, sir. Okay, come to the next one. You can see negative charge on oxygen is more stable than negative charge on carbon. Is that yes, clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now the next one, A will be more stable than B because this is your neutral and this is your charge. So neutral resonating structure is more stable than charge resonating structure. Is that clear, Iram? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. The next one, you can see they are equal to each other. Isn't, uh, aren't they similar or identical? And as you can see, this is your two degree and this is your one degree carbocation. So this will be more stable. Okay. Is that clear both of yes, you? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, due to network, I will be. This is it for today. I'm going to give you some homework. Yeah, and for homework, and from the next class, uh, the voice will not lag, inshallah. The first one is uh, you are going to read about minus M and plus M group. And then aromaticity aromatic anti aromatic and non aromatic and the next topic that you need to study is aromatic hydrocarbon aromatic hydrocarbon in the next class we are going to cover this thing.